Skincare product labels and ingredients can be confusing. There are so many complex words that sound like they come from prehistoric times. Fancy packaging all trying to grab our attention and fancy marketing terms. Yet, the part that we should be most interested in is usually written in that long, legal, tiny terms and conditions sized text that none of us seem to read and just click next to continue. The ingredients. So we all know that it's important, right? We're putting it into our bodies after all. But how do we know what each ingredient is inside and how much of it is inside the product? Also, what does it do for our skin? Is it any good? So join me and let's find out what you should be looking out for before your next purchase or to check what's currently on your shelf. If you're new here, my name's Claudio. I own an aesthetic clinic. And on this channel, we explore the science behind skincare and aesthetics and strategies to level up so that you can achieve maximum growth in business and in life. So first off, why should you bother reading skincare ingredients anyways? Well, I can start off by saying to check the effectiveness. How much of an ingredient is inside the product and does it contain enough that's going to give you the desired effect that you want on your skin? Secondly, there's allergies. Does the, does the product contain any ingredients that you might be allergic to? This can then help you have a quick reference to kind of see yes or no with the product. Lastly, deception. This will help you figure out what ingredient you are looking for and if there's enough of that ingredient inside the product that will make that difference. A lot of companies tend to sprinkle ingredients into the product just more for marketing purposes. So where do you find the ingredient lists? The three most common places that you can find it is on the box, at the back of the actual product itself, or there'll be a leaflet enclosed inside the box. First off, the order of the ingredients means something. So generally you would need to apply a dollop to your skin to get the effect of the ingredients. If you only applied a drop, in most cases, it most likely wouldn't do much with the exception of your concentrates such as retinol. The ingredients are all mixed though into the product. So how do you know how much of the good stuff you're actually getting inside the product? The ingredients are listed from highest concentration to the lowest concentration. This means though, if a really good ingredient is listed at the bottom of the product, you most likely won't see the benefits of it. Now, this is usually just sprinkled in there again for marketing purposes so that they can claim X ingredient is in the product to treat Y concern. But in reality, it won't really do much for you if the concentration of that ingredient is too low. So if you see an ingredient like alcohol listed within the first five ingredients of the product, it'll probably do you well to pass on that product as it won't do too well on your skin. However, there are a few exceptions to this. The first one being the 1% rule. So any ingredients that have a concentration level of less than 1% means that they can be listed in any order. With that in mind though, how do you know when you've hit that 1% line when you're going down the ingredient list? Well, it's not an exact science, but generally as a rule of thumb, the first five ingredients tend to make up the bulk of the formula. Anything that follows generally tends to be lower in concentrations. Next, preservatives. Preservatives in cosmetics prevent bacteria from growing in the product. These are usually 1% or less and anything following that will be in small amounts. Again, an example of this would be phenoxyethanol. This is usually less than 1% when it's put inside a product. So anytime you see that inside your product ingredient list, anything following that generally should be less than 1%. Natural fillers. So in the beginning, when you're looking at the ingredient list, you'll usually see more like chemical sounding names. But as you go down the list, you'll usually see natural sounding names like something extract or oils. And while that may all be nice, they likely won't do much for you. Fragrances and perfume. So anytime you see this, know that it will be 1% or less. So talking about perfume, there's a little bit of a gray science behind this because Generally, companies are allowed to call it perfume to protect the ingredients within it as a trade secret. The reason is now because even if you think of spray on perfume now, it stops people from replicating the actual product. So if they listed all the ingredients at once, then it would be easy to, to replicate it. So this is a form of them, the company's protecting what's in this specific area. However, if the perfume contains an ingredient that causes allergies, which many of them do, they have to then specifically be named. Common ones that are in popular products are limonene and linanol. 
the open jar symbol. So what this basically means is how long you should keep the product for once you've opened it. Any use after that can cause side effects such as with oil. Sometimes oils over time can separate from the product then what happens is the concentration levels change within the product which then can cause problems. Another thing to bear in mind though is the longer you keep a product the more time bacteria has to grow. Expiration date and batch number. So generally what happens when a product expires, um, it usually loses its potency. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is that it can cause irritations and breakouts. So better safe than sorry, toss it out. Now the batch number is also very important because that's given from the companies during the manufacturing process. And this, if there's any a problem with the, the product and it needs to be recalled, this gives the manufacturers a way of being able to communicate to you if your products have been affected, then can be recalled. Keep an eye out for the bunny logo or vegan symbol. Now, if you find a bunny logo on your product, this means that the product was made without animal cruelty and therefore no animals were hurt in the process and tested on of making the product. However though, if a product does not have the bunny logo, it does not automatically mean that they do test on animals. So just to do your own research. And likewise, the vegan symbol represents generally that it's a plant-based product and that it contains no animal products or byproducts. Lastly, don't be afraid of scientific names within the ingredients. A general assumption is that all chemical sounding names must be bad for you. This however is not true as a lot of common ingredients and ingredients that are in fact good for you, beneficial, have chemical sounding names. Now you should always do your own research, but to name a few that you will commonly see in the ingredient list on products are Xanthan gum. Now this is a naturally derived ingredient that is used in the product as a thickening agent. Cetyl alcohol or cetyl alcohol. It's a fatty alcohol that stabilizes emulsion and has a moisturizing action. It's not the drying type like normal alcohol ethanol. Citric acid. Now I know the word acid already sends alarm bells whistling, but citric acid isn't bad. What it is though is it balances the pH levels in the product and also protects from microbial contamination. Tocopherol, this is basically vitamin E that helps moisturize the skin and hydrate it. Equipping yourself with the basic knowledge of what to look for in your ingredients when you're going to make your next purchase will empower you to make the better decision.